So does that mean I can take my mic home? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Your other microphone you could definitely uh, take home, uh, but the new equipment stays in house. Mm-hmm. I'm going to unplug these headphones because I'm getting on my own nerves right now. So um, I, I feel and I need to get better headphones because one one headphone goes off and it's like I have to move it around to hear on both sides so they're they've done their job they're a little tired now so oh you need to get some of them bose headphones or them beats by dre headphones or some shit that sounds really expensive it is well we ain't got it like that it's expensive it's expensive well brandy we are flying solo today welcome back to the book of lies airline what? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'll cut it out. I'll, I'll edit that out. Are we flying? We're, I'm flying uh, next week, actually. I'm flying. Oh, where are you going? Um, uh, Taking a adult vacation. <laughs> going to Puerto Rico's. Oh, okay. That's where you're going. Puerto Rico. Yeah. Puerto Rico. That's yeah. the song, right? Uh, is it? I didn't just make up that funky tune myself. I don't know. It is a song. Um, well, yeah, that's cool. How long are you going to be gone for? So I'm leaving on Thursday. Um, we get to Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico on Friday, mm-hmm. but we have a nine hour layover Blech. in Florida. Florida. So Florida. Um, is that a song too? I feel like it's from Kevin and Bean when they I when I used to commute I would listen to Kevin and Bean in the morning and they would have a skit about bullshit that happened in Florida mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure that was the the jingle. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. It's, well, it's yeah. A crazy place. So, we'll be in Puerto Rico from Friday to Monday. We leave on Monday, and then again we have another nine-hour layover. Oh, there and back. Yes, I would start doing the planning of the flights rather than the it's, laying of the overs. It's because it's um, it's frontier, mm. and he has you know uh, frontier perks, and so he like he booked his flight for like twenty-five dollars. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah. Time out, time out, time out. I'm gonna just. I wish I had a rewind sound bite on here. How does he have frontier perks? They have a thing. You sign up and you get, you know, you get points. Oh, so the more it's like, it's like freaking flyer miles. Yeah. Well, yeah, except for it's not on a credit card. It's with the airline. Right. But it's like with all of them all have rewards and things. Mm-hmm. And like once you stack up enough points. Right. Or- and so he already has the points. So, mm, okay, okay, got it. I thought he had the hookup or something. I was like, who does he know? Like, oh yeah, no. Do you want to talk about who he is or anything like that? I mean, honestly, y'all, we haven't been together in a while, and by we, I mean you guys, listeners. Hello, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for listening, patrons. Hey, patrons, love you guys. Um, but we haven't caught up on the the tea, and we need to get some of that in tea time give them a little taste and then we'll we'll pick up after give them a little taste give them a little taste to the non-listeners so then if you want to know more then y'all can meet us on patreon i mean the non-patrons go ahead go give us a little 10 10 15 foot view of brandy and he who shall not be named uh well i mean i've we've spoken about him haven't we Previously, the we started first, the dating first time. in January. Yeah, it is now October. It. Maybe we talked about it in February. So I was like, "Oh, do you have Valentine's Day plans?" And you're like, uh, mm. "I didn't have Valentine's Day plans." I know. <laughs> sure didn't. Um, uh, I don't know. I think I don't remember the last what what was last said, but you know, basically, you know. We're hanging out. We're it's getting kind of serious. We're going on a vacation, and we're gonna go to Vegas in November. So there's that. What's happening in Vegas? We're just going. Nothing's happening. The- mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, we were supposed to go to Vegas in July, and he went without me and pissed me off. Mm. 
And so I was like, um, I had to, I had to, you know, say some things and, you know, um, make, make certain things clear. And so now here we are. <laughs> All of that song is just playing in my head. You're my little boo thing. I don't give a hoot what you, what you do say. To say, baby. Oh, God, why? I don't know. Um, okay, goody for you. So anyway, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's happening. That's about it. Um, Gracie's birthday was Friday. She had her birthday dinner yesterday. And cool. What's going on in the life of Sunny? Mm, the struggle bus. Oh, um, oh, and I started substitute teaching. Forgot about that part. It's for some horribly behaved children. Um, some of them were literally like making my blood pressure go up. Ooh. Um But that's that's uh you know, that's the thing. I'm baby I'm I was gonna say baby babysitting. I'm babysitting. <laughs> Substituting <laughs> Thursday, Friday, uh Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, and then on Monday and Tuesday. And so um yeah, that's that's happening. So I've got five days of work happening this week and you know, the end of this week and the beginning of next week. Okay. For sixth grade, you don't gotta grade. give us that much information about. I'm just saying, like the ages, you know, like I feel like the little ones are much better behaved than the older ones, like the yes. ten year olds and eleven year olds. Them double digits are the worst. I'm like, where? What have your parents been doing to you? But <laughs> the little ones, you know, because when I I substituted the RSP class, I had pre K all the way up to five. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you could see the differences in behavior at the ages. And I was like, oh, my gosh. It's because <laughs> as children get older, they're trying to impress each other. They, The world is starting to beat down on them. Beat down. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, when you're young, you don't, you're just like, hey, let's have a good day. It's cool. I'm here to learn. But then once they get a little bit older, um, and maybe if they have like social emotional issues and things going on at home that we may not know about, they begin to act out yeah. and ruin it for other children mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. But um, bully for you. Good job. You got a little, little, little hustle going on substituting. I have signed up to substitute as well, but I'm still waiting for my clearance to happen. Well, um, how's that going? Like, where are they at on that? Um, did you did they do your your um, paperwork or did you do it? They did my paper. Well, I, they told me what to do to go online and do the thing, and then they submitted the request or the recommendation for subbing. Right. And the website is very confusing. Let yeah. me just say that um, because I didn't realize I had to go in and like press yes and then answer like questions like if i'm a creep or not and if i'm fired <laughs> right and all those things and mm. i don't have to do it and then also pay uh-huh. the 102 bucks i didn't realize that i figured that out a week later after you looked at it or like yeah after i got the notification that i had been submitted to get the thing uh-huh. i was like oh cool that's it that's all i have to do no problem and then they reached out to me last week they're like hey um you got this notification. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? And so they didn't say, then you go online and f- finish no, the, the process. Nope. Show didn't tell me that. Oh, okay. I had to figure that out for myself and I did. So I've paid and now my thing is just pending. Right. Um, mine is also pending, but mine has been pending for a few, a couple of weeks now, but the district that I'm with also did the whole. Sub- I'm not paying again. I was like, I already paid money. I'm not paying again. Right. And I, you can't get a hold of anybody at the actual commission uh-huh. to see if they're going to give you your money back if you already paid the first time. Because what, what good does it do to pay twice? It doesn't. So I'm like, I'm not paying again. So you have that recommendation. I also have an application that has been in process. Uh-huh. Like so. Pull that shit. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> right? <laughs> Pull that. Well, that's where I am. I just did it through them and paid and did all that stuff. So we'll see what happens. Um, I had, since we last talked, Book of Life. Hey, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Let's get into it really quick. <laughs> I'm Sunny Hepburn. And I'm Brandy Fleeks. And this is Book, Book of Lies. Lies. The podcast. 
It's Bolt, bitches. And if you heard that barking, that's that bitch angel. I'm sorry. Maybe it doesn't pick her up. Maybe. I hope not. But if you do, mm, we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> that's the so bitch I, angel. That bitch angel. So I had two events since we last spoke on the podcast. I did Bark at the Park, which was awesome. I love that event. I love it. I love all the dogs. I love petting the dogs. I like talking to the dog parents. And, of course, selling Beauty's Biscuits. Um, I sold out which was great. And, and then I had another event um, this past weekend in Pear Blossom. And it was fun. I mean, it was a music festival. It's called Cactus Bloom. American folk and bluegrass music festival or some it Shay. And it Shay. there wasn't a lot of foot traffic. Or like, you know, it was very slow. However, the event was at the Outpost in Pear Blossom, and I'm consigning with them, so I left some bags of Beauty's Biscuits there so they could, you know, push, move some biscuits for me. Oh, that's cool. So that, there's another um, source, so you, if you're driving down the 138 <laughs> through Pear Blossom, stop at the Outpost and grab yourself a bag of Beauty's Biscuits. Do they pay you after they sell, or did they, they pay, pay me after? Oh, okay. Boo. Yeah, I would have been like, get your money up front. <laughs> get your get your dollars. Well, they're like, oh, you can check in and like check on your sales, or we'll call you or whatever. So I'll follow up with them maybe this weekend and just see. Are like, they looking for people to like supply their store? They have all kinds of different um, items in there from people, so they do it a lot. So they always they local vendors or whatever. Exactly, they want local stuff. So I was thinking That's about cool. you as well. So I might go out there. Maybe when I go out there, I'll bring you out there and bring some stuff. You price it, and then if they sell it, they sell it. The guy was like, we've had this guy's merchandise in here for years, and I finally just sold one of his hats because they're, like, super overpriced or whatever. Are they cowboy hats? No, just, like, uh, it just had, like, a custom type of, like, logo or design on it, oh. and it was, like, a $25 hat. And he's like, hey, you know, we sell our hats for, like, $13. So, you know, mm -hmm. people are a little frugal. And okay, especially now, but the fucking bacon costs eighty million dollars. So you know, people bacon, want it. They want gas, their food before eggs they want anything finally else. Came down in costs, so eggs are now affordable. But everything, I got too close. My like mouth like <laughs> the microphone, like, like one of them rappers. <laughs> well, everything's just ridiculous. Like I went in the Albertsons and they were trying to sell a can of pumpkin for six fifty. And I was like, suck a regular it. like twelve ounce can or sixteen ounce can. Uh, a however. regular, I think it's sixteen um, ounces, right? Uh, Eight hundred and twenty two grams. <laughs> Six, I think it's sixteen. Ounces. It's a little over an ounce, uh, a little over a pound of pumpkin, which I could usually get that can at Winco, for instance, for like three twenty five ish. Inflation and it is pumpkin spice season, so you know the bitches go crazy over the pumpkin spice. And the stuff. funny thing is, pumpkin spice doesn't actually have pumpkin in it. Exactly. It's like nutmeg and cinnamon and shit. It's the spice. It's, it's the spice not pumpkin. pumpkin. Yeah, exactly. Ha ha, got it. It's Look, pumpkin pie seasoning. Gotcha, bitches. <laughs> Bet you didn't know. But um, yeah, everything is high, but um, we're trying to survive. Do they so. not have it at Geo? Oh, yeah. Over there, it's four fifty a can. Uh, okay. But still, I was just shocked at what Albertsons was trying to charge for a can of pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. I was going to go over there today and get some protein shakes because I'm doing this liquid diet for a week. Oh, um, oh, you trying to slim down? Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, Are you juicing? Are you going to juice? I haven't, no, I haven't made any juices. I'm just, I, I I've found... got lots of apples if you need some. <laughs> <laughs> Apple juice. My neighbor provides me with apples. It's good in this. In I want some of them pomegranates though. Um <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at that tree like, that's a whole lot of pomegranates. Y'all ain't you going to well, use all them pomegranates? I took Gracie over there um, last week, and her and Brindley picked Asian pears and apples, and they each grabbed a pomegranate because they're like, they're ready. Yeah, I need some of them. Um, yeah, so I was going to go to Albertsons, but then I was like, let me go to Grocery Outlet first. Yeah. And so I went over there, and they had, you know, the those bottles of pure protein for a dollar 99 each Ooh. so i grabbed all the ones they had on the shelf damn well i see you trying to get all sexified that's fine that's fine 
Okay, I want to be on the beach like... <laughs> <laughs> whatever okay brandy what are we talking about today oh do we have to do a podcast today um <laughs> is that what we are here for we're here for y'all's entertainment oh and some of the people at the um the cactus bloom um festival i gave them some of our stickers so i was like do you guys listen to podcasts they're like hell yeah and i was like check out book of lies podcast son so if you're listening hey 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 okay so this comes directly from the um, United States District Attorney's Office. Okay. The justice.gov. We're talking about something that's very current. It's happening as we speak. U.S. Representative George Santos of New York. <laughs> they was just capping on him on um, Saturday Night Live. Well, there you go. Here we go. Let's go. Because this is stupid. And, of course, you know, I mean, I'm not going to be all political about it, but this guy's a Republican, and this is what they fucking do. Like, let's not fucking joke about, about, I mean, like, fool ourselves here. We know what they fucking do. They're about. They're about greed, and they're about stealing from people, right? And if you have a problem with it, I don't care. That was a blanketed statement. Not all Republicans feel that way, I'm sure, but a majority of them. The Republicans that are holding office, this is how they are. Oh, we're talking about the ones holding office. Yes. Got it. Got it. I mean, hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so George Anthony DeVolder Santos, or as DeVolder Santos, was born July 22nd, 1988, mm. to Fatima Aziza Caruso Orta de Volder and Gercino, Gercino, I don't know, Gercino Antonio Dos Santos Jr. Hmm. Um, they were both born in Brazil, and his maternal uh, grandparents, Paula, Paulo Horta de Volder and Rosalinda Caruso Horta de Volder were also born in Brazil. Three of their four maternal grandparents, blah, 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 who cares? So... <laughs> <laughs> George Santos also has a younger sister. Um, he uh, has dual citizenship with the U.S. and Brazil through his parents. And in 2013, a Brazilian court described him as an American. I guess uh, in Brazil, he had some court issues. I don't know. He holds a GED uh, from, you know, wherever the hell, whatever the hell adult education program that he graduated from mm. he attended intermediate school 125 in woodside queens and ps 122 in astoria queens he moved to uh, rio de janeiro around 2008 and he lived there until 2011 and then came back for some reason to you know do some fuckery <laughs> <laughs> to come back to do some fuckery that's why they always come back for the fuckery oh we have stickers that say what the fuckery if you want one send me an email book of lies podcast at gmail.com name an address i'll send you some stickers uh, there's a whole lot of information here about him being a drag queen in brazil um he's you know you know how they do it so he left brazil though because of some fucking check fraud bullshit that he did down there. Ugh. Yeah. Because, you know, the fraud started before he took office in New York. Well, that's how, I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to stop. Go ahead. He had a he had a, a case, a, a check fraud case against him in New York. and I mean, in New York, in Brazil. And he left and moved to New York. So from October 2011 to July 2012, he worked as a customer service representative at a call center for Dish Network. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Sometime after that, in 2013, he worked for Hotels Pro, which is a subsidi subsidiary of um, Met Global, which, you know, is a company that nobody likes. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. they have a bunch of negative reviews online. Um 2016, he moved to Orlando, Florida when, you know, with his work. And then he registered to vote and changed his driver's license to a Florida residence. Then in 2017, he started using the name George Devildare Santos. And he worked 
in an unconfirmed capacity, as it says, for Linkbridge Investors, a small company that hosts closed door conferences for investors. Who cares? In 2019, um, his he started running for office in 2019. He started running for office in mm-hmm. 2019. Okay. Yeah. It was mid-January when he started working for another company called Harbor City Capital, which is a Florida-based alternative investment firm. The SEC filed a civil suit a year and a half later accusing that company of running a $17 million Ponzi scheme. Shit. And in June, during his first run for Congress, Santos, under the name George Devildare, opened an office for Harbor City Capital in Midtown Manhattan. The next month, he became the firm's New York regional director. He wasn't personally named in a lawsuit, and none of his colleagues were. And he's also publicly denied any knowledge of that fraud. At the company that he was working Uh Uh-huh. Harbor City Capital. Harbor City Capital. He claimed in 2020, in an interview, that he was managing $1.5 billion in funds for Harbor City with a fixed yield income return of 12% and an internal rate of return of 26%. That seems like a lot. Mm Mm-hmm. Sounds like a lie to me. Mm Mm-hmm. They paid him, the, the company paid him at least through April 2021 after he founded the Devil Dare organization, which he has claimed to be the basis of his wealth. Mm. So Santos opens the Devil Dare organization, his own organization, obviously. He gave inconsistent explanations of the company's business. So according to his financial disclosures, he was the sole owner and managing member of the business. His campaign website website had called it family owned and managing eighty million dollars in assets. Mm. On financial disclosure forms, he called the company a capital introduction consulting firm, and it was based in New York, but it was registered in Florida, where it was dissolved in September twenty two for failing to file annual reports. He said that. His accountant had missed the annual filing date. And during his 2022 congressional campaign, he lent his campaign more than $700,000 and reported receiving a salary of $750,000 and dividends of $1 to $5 million from Devil Dare, even though he also listed the company's estimated value as in the same range. $750,000. Mm-hmm. No, the company's value, $1 to $5 million. Mm. It the company was reinstated on January twentieth. I mean on December twentieth. I don't know if that's December twentieth of twenty twenty two or what. It was reinstated then? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Um <laughs> <laughs> So he said that, you know, the company was a large company or I don't know, maybe small to medium or medium to large. I don't know. Uh, but his financial disclosure forms didn't list any clients that were using his services. So three experts in election law interviewed by the New York Times said that his omit the omission could be problematic if th- his clients do exist because he didn't list any. In July 2022, Dunn and Bradstreet estimated that his revenue was less than $50,000. dollars mm. He listed himself as the registered agent on the paperwork, which could only be done if he lived in Florida and not New York. And he gave the company's mailing address at a company that was addressed to an apartment in Merritt Island that was purchased by a couple in August, which was owned by uh, Harbor City's yeah chief technology officer, Jason Benoit. Yeah, he is has given lots and lots of false statements about his family, you know, about where he comes from, about all these things. He's basically a a Brazilian Donald Trump. Oh. (laughs) He's a liar. (laughs) Got it, got it, got it. (laughs) You just have to be a naturalized citizen to, like, run for politics, Well, his parents moved here. Okay. And so he became a citizen he was born here. Oh, he was born here. He was born here. Okay. Um, but he also had dual citizenship, citizenship because they were still citizens of Brazil. Mm-hmm. I guess they never became citizens of the United States. Okay. Or they had dual citizenship. I don't know. Like some com- countries make you like give up citizenship mm-hmm. if you become citizen of the United States. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, I don't think Brazil does. 
So who knows? Hmm. So he's lied about a whole bunch of shit. He lied about that his family had Jewish heritage. Like, why would you? Why? Why would you do that? You're telling us that you, you know, I'm sure it was because he was in New York running for office, and there's a high Jewish population, yep. and so he wants to claim Jewish heritage. But he's fucking Brazilian. He claimed that his maternal grandparents were Jewish Holocaust refugees who fled the so- who fled Soviet Ukraine and German occupied Belgium. Both of his, all of his family, you know, his previous grandparents were born in Brazil. <sighs> He's so gross. Um, he denied being a criminal to WABC radio saying, I'm not a fraud. I'm not a criminal who defrauded an entire country and made up the fictional character and ran for Congress, which is what he did. And admitted to the post that he lied about graduating from college and working for Goldman Sachs and Citigroup because he never did that. Mm-hmm. During the interview, he said, I never claimed to be Jewish. 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 I never claimed to be Jewish. I'm Catholic. Because I learned my maternal family had a Jewish background. I said I was Jewish. So which one are you, which one, what are you saying? I never claimed to be Jewish. He just claimed that he has Jewish heritage. Mm-hmm. Okay. Fine. If you say so. Um, he claimed that he was biracial. <laughs> <laughs> and that his Brazilian-born father had roots from, in Angola. <sighs> He's so dumb. He was raised as a Catholic, but as um, you know, at various points in his career, he claimed to be Jewish, half-Jewish, a non-observant Jew, a proud American Jew, and a Latino Jew. At other points, he described himself as a Catholic. And then he says that his Jewish par- grandparents, the, the grandparents that apparently fled the Soviet UK, or Ukraine, my bad, not UK. On his Soviet father's Ukraine. side? Mother's side. Okay. Apparently those grandparents converted to Catholicism after the Holocaust. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Right. He, okay, so he claimed that Israel, uh, Steve Israel, who's a Democrat, he claimed that Steve Israel told him, oh, you're going to be the first Republican I'm voting for in my life. Mm-hmm. Steve Israel denied saying any of that and that he didn't even appear on the fucking guest list. It was at an event. So I didn't I didn't read the whole thing because it's just too much nonsense. But this guy's just spewing lies He's, left and right. He He's is just like a lie, habitual lie. liar. La, 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 right. He's a habitual liar. Um, at a meeting at the U.S. Israel PAC a month before his 2022 election, he courted pro-Israel activists by falsely claiming to be Halakhilakili Jewish, according to attendees, a co-chair of the organization, and said this served to give the impression of that his mother was Jewish, getting a chuckle out of the crowd. So that's fucking weird. He his former roommate said that he off, often made anti-Semitic jokes. And corroborated an account that Santos previously joked online about Adolf Hitler killing Jews and black people. He's a fucking piece of shit. And and we haven't even gotten into the shit that he's like being indicted for yet. In 2023, uh, media ap- appearances, he claimed that his... Oh gosh. His claim to Jewish ancestry was vindicated by DNA test kits, mm-hmm. but he didn't reveal the results. <laughs> I've been vindicated... But you don't need to see what it says. Thank you. Exactly. He told the hosts um, in May uh, of a podcast in May 2023 that he was raised Catholic but considered himself a member of the tribe because, according to him, his mother's ancestry was predominantly Jewish. He said he had many Jewish friends among his constituents and went to Shabbat dinners more often than most. Dude, you're a piece of crap. On his campaign website, he wrote that his mother was the first female executive at a major financial institution. <laughs> she worked in the South Tower of the World Trade Center and died a few years later after surviving the September 11th attacks. Was his mom in Brazil? On her 2003 visa application to return to the U.S. from Brazil, his mother stated that she had not been in the country since 1999. Bam! I knew it! I knew it! What? He's trying to lie to kick it. Why would you? These all of these things are verifiable facts, sir. 
or verifiable lies. I didn't know we were going to look into it. His mother wasn't actually a domestic worker or a home care nurse. Why do you have to lie about your mother's what your mother did for work? First executive at a major financial institution. I don't get it. What's the purpose? Not clout, but I think it's just maybe it's clout chasing in general. When she died, a Brazilian newspaper described her as a as a cook. Her former roommates and friends said she spoke no English. And in July of 2021, he wrote that 9-11 claimed by my mother's life. Oh, my God. In a tw- October 2021 interview, he said his mother was caught up in an ash cloud during 9-11 but never applied for relief because the family could afford medical bills. In December 2021, he wrote that his mother died five years earlier. In December 22, he claimed his parents survived being down there at the World Trade Center in 9-11. A priest of the family's Catholic Church reported that Santos told him the family could not afford a funeral when his mother died in 2016. The priest recalled that the collection at a memorial mass raised a significant amount of money for the family, which he gave to Santos, and he also had a friend set up a GoFundMe. In his Piers Morgan interview, Santos insisted his mother had been at the World Trade Center the day of the attack. It's quite, he said, it's quite insensitive to try to rehash my mother's legacy. She wasn't one to mislead me. I stayed convinced that's the truth. Well, listen here. If, if she was even there, which we know is not true, he would have only been, um, like 14. Right. Stop your lies. Like, the math ain't mapping. Just stop. It, mm-mm. And he's, he's saying that his mom told him that she was there. You would, you would know that she was there. You would have been a child. If she died, you would have been an orphan, right? No, he said she, she died in 2016. He said she, she died um, because of inhaling the, you know, the, 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 the dust. Right. And then before that, he said that she actually died at the World Trade Center. I don't, well, he said it claimed her life. I don't think, I don't think I, he I means, see what he's trying to insinuate. But yeah, but it, it's, stop. it's all a lie. Yeah. All of it. Like he's trying to, trying to have some sort of validity there and it's ridiculous. He claimed in 2019 and 2020 to have attended the Horace Mann School, which is a prep school in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. He went to fucking all PS schools. Yeah. You don't even have a name. You're just public school one, two, three. <laughs> exactly. He went to 122. Exactly. <laughs> <was> um, close. <laughs> so he claimed to go to this prep school before withdrawing because of fam- family hardship. The school has no record of him being there. He later claimed that he attended ninth grade at Horace Mann for six months at age 14 to 15, suggesting he had attended under one of his other names. The name... The school reiterated that it had checked all records and all names, and he did not attend there. He falsely claimed to hold a bachelor's degree in finance and economics from Baruch College and to have graduated in the top percentile of his class with a 3.89 grade point average. Why not just go for the whole 4.0? Okay, fucking go for go it. Go Suma, baby. <laughs> the hell. He also uh, claimed this time period that he was in college overlapped with the time that he was in Brazil. Okay. Friends of his have recalled times when he claimed to be taking classes at Baruch, but never seemed to study. And in January 2023, Nassau County Republican Party Chairman Joseph Cairo said during a press conference that Santos falsely told him he was a star player on the Baruch volleyball team as his Linkbridge supervisor had been and that it had won the league championship. In a pre-election radio interview, he claimed that his supposed volleyball career led him to needing both knees replaced, mm-hmm. and he admitted to lying about graduating from any college. He falsely claimed to hold a Master of Business Administration from New York University and to have scored a 710 on the graduate management admission test, the GMAT, mm-hmm. and to have paid off his supposed student loans by 2020. Mm. Why pretend that you have student loans? They suck. Like, why even fake that? Like, <laughs> because I paid them off. Oh, yeah. They're all paid off. Bully for you. He, one person that he had tried to get to invest in Harbor City, he had told this person that he turned down an offer to go to Harvard Business School. One of his roommates who lent him money in 2014 that has not been repaid, <laughs> <laughs> by the way, <laughs> despite a judgment to that effect, 
Recall Santos claiming to be a graduate of NYU's business school, but seeming not to know its name. He also <laughs> later recalled how Santos's personal financial situation fluctuated wildly. He would go to bars with rolls of hundred dollar bills, and then three days later would have no money. <sighs> oh my gosh, this guy's just a ball of lies. In his interview with Piers Morgan, he admitted that he lied about his college experience, calling it the biggest regret of his life. He explained that he did so because of the expectation on society to have that as a part of his biography, but that he couldn't afford to actually attend. He disclaimed any responsibility for the GMAT score appearing on the resume that he fucking submitted and that was published by the Nassau County Republican Committee. Say, I didn't supply it and nobody associated with me supplied it where did this resume come from then someone made you a fake resume and submitted it for you and you didn't know about it boy stop lying morgan asked why he thought why santos thought he could get away with lying about his education in a congressional election and santos replied that since no one had raised any questions about those claims during his 2020 campaign he believed they wouldn't be an issue in a later campaign (laughs) i lied about it before what, I mean, okay, why nobody, nobody questioned it, it then. Why would they question it now? <laughs> Santos blamed his resume lies on the local Republican Party, saying in a February 2023 Newsmax interview, I would have never gotten the nomination from the Nassau County GOP if I had not concluded college. Because, okay, because listen, I was thinking, wondering why, how, just like, how is this guy even uh, an elected figure? Like, I feel like you, you kind of have to have a, a decorated background and he's been decorating it. Yeah. Got it. Mm-hmm. He should be like ejected or what's that called? Impeached. Yeah. They ousted, they ousted them. Um, that has to happen at the Senate level. And... He's going to go to jail, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, sweet. Let's um, go. <laughs> I mean, you know, he hasn't been, he hasn't had a trial yet, but that motherfucker's going to jail. Okay. Um, he used various alias- aliases, including Anthony Zabrowski <laughs> and Anthony Devil Dare, a 2011 Wikipedia user page created under the latter name. Claims the account holder acted in Hannah, Montana, and the sweet life of Zach and Cody. Okay. After returning from Brazil, he told friends that he had worked as a journalist for a Brazilian media conglomerate, Global. The New York Times could not find his name on any of the on the organization's website. Um, Santos also told a roommate in late 2013 that he was a model who worked at New York Fashion Week and would be appearing in Vogue. You're fucking not a model, sir. <laughs> like we can look at you and see you're not a model. Oh my gosh! What and are you talking we're about? probably Check never a model. Check my Wikipedia. He called himself a seasoned Wall Street financier and investor, and. He- he said he worked for Citigroup and Goldman Sachs, but neither company has any record of him. His campaign website stated that he has an associate as asset manager or that he was an associate asset manager in the real estate, real asset division of Citigroup. That company sold his asset management division in 2005 <laughs> before he claimed to have been employed there. What does he even do besides just all he this makes line? up lies? He makes up lies. Like he did work for a financial, you know, group that he did discuss that. Yes, but not for very long. And I'm sure he was stealing from it. I mean, I'm saying, you know, I was, uh, let's just stack them charges. Well, the company, you know, it was it, fraud. Yeah, yeah. The, the SEC already. Yeah, took care of them. Um, on a 2022 podcast, he claimed that while he was employed at Goldman, he attended. Salt the Salt Conference seven years earlier and was criticized and criticized the company for investing in renewable energy. Because why the fuck would you want to do that? Calling it a taxpayer subsidized scam. Um, the person who runs the conference, Anthony Scaramucci, said there is no record of Santos ever even attending the fucking conference. <sighs> <laughs> He's so fucking stupid. I can't. I don't. He worked as a customer service representative at a call center for Dish Network. And as we mentioned earlier, from October 2011 to July 2012. That overlaps the times that he said that he worked at Citigroup, which again sold the the, the department that he said he worked for mm-hmm. in 2005. So there's that. He told the Post that his Citigroup claim was a poor choice of words and that... <laughs> 
the subsequent employer had been in limited partnerships with those companies. He claimed that his family was wealthy and had extensive real estate holdings in the U.S. and Brazil, and he repeated this claim during his 2022 congressional campaign, saying that he and his family owned 13 rental properties in New York. No such properties were listed on his campaign's financial disclosure forms or in public records. Santos later admitted to the Post that the claim was false and he owned zero properties as of the end of 2022. Damn, you don't know shit, bro. Um, this man is a poor man pre- trying to be a wealthy man to get office, get in office. And he managed to get in office. This shows you what the fucking voters will fucking believe mm-hmm. and how clouded they are by the fact that this person claims to be something. Make up a bunch of shit that is verifiable, but after the fact, you've you know made it into office and now everyone's like looking into you and they're like, fuck, this guy's a fucking liar. In November 22, um, in an interview, he they talked about, remember the Pulse Club, nightclub shooting in Florida? Yes. In Orlando? Yes. He claimed that his company lost four employees mm-hmm. in this shooting. The New York Times found no connection between the 49 victims killed in the attack and the company named in Santos's biography. In a December 22 interview, Santos changed his story saying, we did lose four people that were going to be coming to work for the company that I was starting up in Orlando. I'm sorry. Stop. Just shut your lying mouth. Okay. Just why are you, why? Why do you feel the need to lie? To associate with, like, first of all, that's to associate with tragedies, because now there's two tragedies Mm -hmm. that he's associating himself with Mm -hmm. via his mother and via false employees. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, what are we... Do- Why? Why? You know, the world loves a tragedy, apparently. Disgusting. During his 2022 congressional campaign, he told prospective donors that he was a producer for the musical Spider-Man, Turn Off the Dark. Michael Cole, who is the, the lead producer of the musical denied that Santos was involved with the show and that the musical's playbills did not contain his name. Santos was living Brazil in 2011 when the show opened and his alleged time as a producer overlaps with his employment at Dish Network. In August 2023, he downplayed the significance of many false or exaggerated claims he had made related to his job history, saying he had not posted his resume online during his campaign. He also noted that studies show that most people lie on their resume is just unfortunately the reality. You know what? I was listening to the radio and they did say that like 70 percent of people lie on their resume and 33 percent of people do it multiple times. And so he's like just falling in with his stats, I guess. You're not lying on... Like, you made up a whole resume. Your whole resume is a lie. Is a lie. This is fake. This is a fake resume, bro. He listed his residence as in Elmhurst, Queens, outside of the district in which he was seeking office um, in, during his 2020 campaign. He and his partner later moved to a row house in Whitestone, Queens. Its owner said that they moved there in July 2020. In March 2022, he told Newsday that he left White... The Whitestone because of an alleged January 2021 vandalism incident. He was registered to vote at the Whitestone address during his congressional campaigns, but did not appear to live there. His landlord said he moved out of the Whitestone residence in August 2022, leaving $17,000 in damages. $17,000. But records show he was still registered there when he voted that November. Um, After he fucked up the house? <laughs> Seventeen thousand dollars. What did you do? What did you do? Who I want to see knows? pictures. Who fucking knows? Probably pulled the fucking pipes out, sold them. Fucking crackhead. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he continued to receive mail there after the election, including the certification of his election victory, according to the landlord, who had disposed of most of it. <sighs> Santos told reporters he lived. He planned to move to Oyster Bay. But he and his partner apparently moved into a house in Huntington outside of his congressional district's boundaries. In August 22, he told the Post that the house was his sister's, but the Times later found out she lived in Elmhurst. Why Why are you you're running to, to, for office in a district you don't even fucking live in? Like, what the fuck? Why? Why? What was the reason? The, the, what was the reason? On at least three occasions, he claimed to have been the victim of a crime that he apparently never reported to the police. 
In January 2016, he claimed to have been robbed of the money he was on his way to give his former landlady's attorney in settlement of her eviction claim against him. Of course he was robbed. I didn't have to win because they got robbed. And of course he was evicted. And of course he was evicted. He sounds like a straight POS. Yeah. Five years later... Santos claimed that he and his partner had found stones and eggs thrown at their White House apartment after they returned to it from a party at Mar-a-Lago. Ew. Well, you went to Mar-a-Lago. Fuck you. Um, The owner, who lived in the building's lower unit, did not recall any such incident, and the Times found no relevant police report. After his election victory, Santos told two Brazilian journalists on a podcast that during mid-2021, he had been mugged in New York City. This time, as he walked out of a building at the corner of 5th Avenue and 55th Street in Midtown Manhattan in mid-afternoon. A group of thieves, he said, made off with his briefcase, watch, and shoes and fled the scene before anyone, even the police, noticed anything. Why would the police notice anything? You didn't call them. And you let them take your shoes? You lying, though, but come on now. Vanity Fair noted that the intersection in question is one of the busiest in the city, crossed by roughly 27,000 pedestrians every three hours during the day. Jeez. Additionally, the Peninsula New York Luxury Hotel is on one of the corners with a Harry Winston jewelry store opposite, resulting in a heavy security presence that likely includes many security cameras. Santos has not provided a police report of the incident, and the podcast host requested, as the podcast host requested, his description of the alleged assault included a comment that has been characterized as an overtly racist stereotype about black people being likely to commit crimes. Because, of course, he did. In addition to his claim in October 2020 of having both knees replaced, (laughs) he said in an interview earlier that year that he had been diagnosed with a brain tumor and received radiation treatment. He also claims to suffer from an immunodeficiency and acute chronic bronchitis. When asked in 2022, his campaign did not give details or answer questions about his purported brain tumor. He must have a brain tumor to be such a fucking liar. Maybe that's impact, affecting his, his behavior, um, his ability to, to tell the truth, remember shit. I don't if, know. if in fact he does, maybe, but it sounds like he doesn't and he's taking the cancer game now. Uh-huh. Like, he's like, okay, let's just turn it into cancer. Everybody will forgive me if I have cancer. That makes sense. That's what they do. Like, you lie, lie, lie. You try and get out of it by lying some more. Just stop, please. Like, I feel sick, honestly, just listening to all this stuff. One more, and then we'll go get into what he's being... St- charged with (laughs) this is this is just a history of lies it's all a history of lies right here in his 2020 campaign online biography he claimed that he and his family had worked charitably on behalf of children born with rare genetic skin disorder epidermolosis bullosa but vice news found that no one involved with the uh with the few charities that specifically work with eb patients in the U.S. or Brazil had ever received contributions or heard of him under any name Santos is known to have used, or his family being involved with efforts in that area. Sometime during 2022, the campaign changed the website so it no longer mentioned EB to language saying that his family's charitable efforts are directed or were directed at helping at-risk children and America's veterans. Mm. I think the veterans should come for him. Okay, did you run me some money? No, you didn't. <laughs> Cuz these fucking these motherfuckers are insane. On two on Tuesday, October 10th, 2023, the US Attorney's Eastern Office, Eastern District of New York office, uh filed filed charges against George Santos and he's being charged with conspiracy, mm. wire fraud, mm. false statements, Falsification of records, oh, yes. aggravated identity theft, and credit card fraud. Whoa. Aggravated. A 23 count superseding indictment was filed on the 23rd or on October 10th, 2023. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Charging week. <laughs> George Anthony Devolder Santos, better known as George Santos, the United States representative for the third district of New York. And this is directly from the this, the the US. You know, district attorney. Um, With one count of conspiracy to commit offenses against the United States, two counts of wire fraud, two counts of making materially false statements to the Federal Elections Commission, two counts of falsifying records submitted to obstruct the FEC, the Federal Elections Commission, two counts of aggravated identity theft, and one count of excess device fraud. 
In addition to the seven counts of wire fraud, three counts of money laundering, one count of theft of public funds, and two counts of making materially false statements to the United States House of Representatives that were charged in the original indictment, Santos is due back in federal court on in Central Islip on October 27th, 2023. Woo, buddy! As alleged, he is charged with stealing people's identities and making charges on his own donors' credit cards without their authorization. Oh, that's disgusting. Lying to the FEC and, by extension, the public about his financial state or the financial state of his campaign. He falsely inflated the campaign's reported receipts and with non-existent loans and contributions that were either fabricated or stolen. He allegedly led multiple additional fraudulent criminal schemes lying to the American public in the process. The FBI is committed to upholding the laws of our electoral process and anyone who attempts to violate the law as part of a political campaign will face punishment in the criminal justice system. He's going to jail. Oh, yeah. Um, He allegedly stole identities of family members, used credit card information of political contributors, uh, contributors, contributors. (laughs) I thought you picked up an accent or something. (laughs) (laughs) Contributors. Um, So during the 2022 election cycle, he was a candidate for the United States House of Representatives in New York's third congressional. He fucking made it to office, which which like fucking just blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Nancy Marks, who pleaded guilty on October 5th, 2023 to related conduct, was the treasurer treasurer for his principal congressional campaign committee, Devil Dare Santos for Congress. During this election cycle, Santos and Marx conspired with one another to devise and execute a fraudulent scheme to obtain money for the campaign by submitting materially false reports to the FEC on behalf of the campaign Ooh. in which they inflated the campaign's re- fundraising numbers for the purpose of misleading the FEC and National Party Committee and the public. Specifically, the purpose of the scheme was to ensure that Santos and his campaign qualified for a program administered by the National Party Committee, pursuant to which the National Party Committee would provide financial and logistical support to his campaign. To qualify for the program, he had to demonstrate, among other things, that his congressional campaign had raised at least $250,000 from third-party contributors in a single quarter. And that's how you win elections, by fucking raising money, by having money and raising money. Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. Not by how much people like you or how much, you know, people believe in your message. It's by how much money you can fucking raise. That that gets you on the fucking ballot. Sad. Things need to change around here. (laughs) To create the a public appearance that his campaign had met the financial benchmark and was otherwise financially viable, Santos and Marx agreed to falsely report to the FEC that at least 10 family members of Santos and Marx had made significant financial contributions to the c- campaign. When Santos and Marx both knew that these individuals had neither made or the reported contributions nor given authorization for their personal information to be included in such false public reports, In addition, understanding that the National Party Committee relied on the FEC fundraising data to evaluate candidates, the candidates' qualification for the program, Santos and Marx agreed to falsely report to the FEC that Santos had loaned the campaign significant sums of money when, in fact, Santos had not made the reported loans and, at the time the loans were reported, did not have the funds necessary to make such loans. These false reported loans included a $500,000 loan when Santos had less than $8,000 in his personal and business bank accounts. Woo! Through the execution of this scheme, Santos and Marx ensured that Santos met the necessary financial benchmarks to qualify for the program administered by the National Party Committee. As a result of qualifying for the program, the congressional campaign received financial support. In addition, between approximately December 2021 and August 2022, he devised an ex- and executed a fraudulent scheme to steal the personal identity and financial information of contributors to his campaign. He then charged contributors credit cards repeatedly without their authorization. Because of these unauthorized transactions, f- transactions funds were transferred to his campaign to the campaigns of other candidates for elected office and to his n- own bank account to conceal the true source of these funds and to circumvent campaign contributed... Contributed. 
campaign contribution limits, Santos falsely represented that some of the campaign contributions were made by other persons, such as his relatives or associates, rather than the true cardholders. Santos did not have authorization to use their names in this way. For example, in December 2021, one contributor texted Santos and others to make a contribution to his campaign, provided billing information for two credit cards, in the days after he received the billing information, Santos used credit card information to make numerous contributions to his campaign and affiliated political committees in amounts exceeding applicable 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 <laughs> applicable contri- contribution limits without the contributor's knowledge or authorization to mask the true source of these contributions and thereby circumvent the applicable campaign contribution limits. He falsely identified the contributor for one of the charges as one of his relatives. In the following months, he repeatedly charged that person's credit card without that person's knowledge and made at least $44,800 in charges on this fucking card and repeatedly concealed the true source of that money and listed himself or his relatives or other people as the donors. Fuck this guy. $44,000 on a credit card? That's why he was hanging out at Mir Largo and wherever <laughs> where the people... He wanted to rub elbows with rich fools who wouldn't notice that their credit cards was being ping-a-ding-ding. Do you know what I'm... Th- oh, my God. I would have been like... um. Citibank, Chase, Bank of America, Discover, American Express, like, the fuck? On one occasion, he charged $12,000 to a contributor's credit card, ultimately transferring the vast majority of that money into his personal bank account. Um, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. The case is being handled by the office's public integrity section. He's going to jail for a long time. The Long Island Criminal Division and the Justice Department's Criminal Division's Public Integrity Section. Assistant U.S. State's Attorneys Ryan Harris, Anthony Bagnola, and Laura Zuckerweis, along with trial attorneys Jacob Steiner and John Today. They're all in charge of the prosecution with assistance from, you know, they're probably blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, uh, he goes back to court on the, the 27th, 27th of October. So 10 days after we released this episode. And, um, yeah, he's going to jail. You go into prigione. Prigione. <laughs> In Italian, it's prigione. Prigione. Um, fuck this guy. And that's so- like, oh, mm-hmm. wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. These are the people you guys voted for. Wow. Jail time. I had no idea all this stuff was going on. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Okay. Wow. Interesting. So we'll keep you updated as to, you know, what shakes, what shakes. And speaking of updates, we have a, a Carrie, a Carrie Russell. Was it Carrie Russell? Carly Russell. Carly Russell. Carly Russell has been um, sentenced. She's going to jail for a year. For her um, kidnapping scheme, where she kidnapped herself for 49 hours and threw what? Mississippi on its ear? For, uh, yeah, for two days. They was looking for her. Um, so she's, uh, I feel like she has a fine to pay of $800 and she has, um, what's that other thing called? Not repercussions. Restitution. Restitution. Uh, I think it's about. Seventeen thousand dollars in restitution. So Carly, she's not doing any time behind bars. She's doing a year. A year. That's right. Okay. She got a year. So good she luck with that. Um, be honest and stop the lies. But this fucking George, fuck this guy. Oh my gosh. Wow. So he lied, 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 lied. Got to where he wanted to get to, but getting there, he was stealing people's identities, using their credit cards fraudulently, collecting chips. And also conspiring with another person to do all of this. Mm-hmm. And then some, and all the lies. The Gosh. funny thing is, like, all these lies that he was telling, this was all over the span of the last three years. <laughs> like, he was making up stories about 2011, 2016, 9-11, all right. those things. But he made all of those stories up in the last three years. And then did all of this financial fraud as well mm-hmm. uh, that we know of in this country. Because, mm-hmm. again, Brazil and check fraud. Check fraud, okay. But, um, yes. All for to get elected. Wow, bro. It's disgusting. You think that 
you're going to get like what money, power, respect by being an elected official. But congratulations, you just like showed us exactly why we don't like politicians. Yeah. Wow. Sucks to be you, man. Um, Brandy, do you have a thumbs up? (laughs) (laughs) My thumbs up is that I will never, ever, ever commit financial fraud on this capacity. Like I might borrow a dollar (laughs) and say it's for something when it's for something else, but I'm not going to fucking go and rob people of their money to contribute to my lifestyle or to my campaign or to further myself, you know? Right. That's nuts. It's insane. It's sad. It's gross. It's disgusting. And you belong in hell. Ooh. uh, And you're not even Jewish. (laughs) And that part. Like, you lied about being Jewish for what? Oh, I forgot to get the Jewish vote. Yes, that's That's why. That's what it was, probably. It might as well. uh, (laughs) Well, This is supposed to be a thumbs up. We're not supposed to talk about George again. (laughs) It's just like, why? You you are a clout chaser that badly that Mm -hmm. you... Literally, you're going to end yourself up in prison for some time. It's not going to be like five years. I think this is a political crime. 20. He needs to go to prison. At least for 20. Yeah. Like, you need to, because people, he's probably not the only person who's done this. I'm he's sure probably he's the not. only person who's been caught. Yeah, there was someone else who got caught. I'm going to look at some more political frauds because political season's coming up. Um, Wow. Anyway, yeah. So, okay, my thumbs up because that was I was just being facetious about that. Um, my thumbs up because <laughs> uh, do you think we might be recording next week or no? Uh, we could do every two weeks for now. Yeah. Every two weeks, huh? we should. Well, anyway. I'll, well, are we'll you leaving next all. weekend? Yeah. No. Yeah, next weekend, not this weekend. So, do you want to record this coming weekend? Um, we can do. Baby, we can do it anytime, do it right. We I mean, it's your it topic, baby. but yeah, do we it. can do it virtual or Monday or whatever. I don't know. Oh, you're going to be out of town? No, I'm going to be working. Oh, okay. okay. We'll I'll figure it out. Work. No worries. We don't have to talk about it right now. Anyway, so my thumbs up, just because, you know, we don't know if we're doing another episode, is that I'm going to Puerto Rico. And I intend to have lots of beverages, <laughs> lots of adult beverages, oh, and Lordy. be on the beach. Okay. And... Um, why don't you share yeah. with maybe take control of the Book of Lies Instagram and share with us? You don't have to if you don't want. To I'm like, it. but it's not a it's not a Book of Lies vacation. Whatever, bro. We need to do a Book of Lies vacation. We need to go somewhere like and do a, a live episode. But we can talk about that later. We can talk about that later. <sighs> um, are you asking me a question? What is your thumbs up, <sighs> Sunny, for the week? Uh, or the last week, two oh weeks. My gosh. Oh my I have been binge watching Supernatural. Supernatural. Yeah, so I'm still on that kick. I'm on season six, and I've got nine more to go. Okay, there's a lot of seasons. I'm almost done. Nine more to go. So I've just been um, getting down on Supernatural. I did a follow Friday the other day on Twitter. X, whatever y'all want to call it. On the artist formerly known, the app formerly known as Twitter? Yeah, that one. And it was pretty cool. So thanks for engaging with us. I'll try and be more active on that platform. I'm just kind of iffy on it. On the Twitters? On the Twitters. But Supernatural, like, I like that they're changing it up on certain things, but it's still the same stuff, but it's still... Them has captivated me and werewolves and yeah like someone and always dies and goes to hell and <laughs> comes back <laughs> and you know there's always something missing or whatever some person's missing right uh-huh. always something so it's cool it's still got me um captured oh oh go ahead sorry <sighs> i started it? watching gen v Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! On uh, Star, I want to say yeah. Stars. Prime. Oh, I should say I watched it because I watched Prime. all the episodes so far. There's five. Oh, don't tell me Jamal started watching it. I know it's like from the 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 creator of the boys, or it's the boys universe, or something. It's like the that. boys universe. It's okay. basically a spinoff because the 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 seven are always mentioned, and they're at a school. Oh, um, okay. It's what is it called? It's basically I want to say Hero University. That's not what it's called, but it's, don't tell us about it. I want to watch it. It's you know, it's all of them, the ones that. Were given V. Oh, as kids, right? They're, they... they're, it's a college, so they're, you know, sure. young adults. Um, But what's Jensen Ackles' his name? He's not Lamplighter. Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy is going to make an appearance. Oh. 
Mm-hmm. And they, because, you know, I think it's on the next episode. He hasn't appeared yet, but I was like. Oh, you have to wait every week to get, catch yes, an episode? Yes, yes. Oh, don't you hate that? So there's five episodes. I watched it all yesterday. Okay. And I was just like, oh, my God. And you know what? Honestly, like, it's a, there's a lot of social, like, there's a commentary on um eating disorders there's a commentary on social media there's a, so there's a lot of you know that because it is happening but um some of these powers are nuts i mean they're they were nuts on the boys but hmm. some of these powers are ridiculous and i'm just like why why whoever created it is a weirdo I'm yeah sure. and i was like they're they're doing like the most to like shock and, and awe and outrage because you know there's um a thing back they used to do back in the day for um mental health where they would basically like pound of like a, a steak or like a, a a stick or something pokey up your butt like and that's supposed to help cure mental illness one of the doctors does this to a, a you know a patient in this show weird i'm just like really so we're bringing out bringing back outdated methods for hysteria and things yeah so yeah just Ill. crazy well i hear you sister um i'm just gonna go ahead and pray for all those people in in israel oh my god um this the, the palestinians and this just whole thing the kids i mean this general. is this is decades it's long disgusting. it's a decades long yeah but it's it's really like i'm seeing all this stuff on social media and i'm just like what can i do and i know they have like red crosses accepting donations for like both of these these people i it's just it's just really sad and that somebody just needs to stop it because they can't they're killing it's, babies it's done there like it's and it's something that's not gonna stop it's just it's not. like it's just gonna continue and continue on you and- know when it will stop honestly when israel returns the land that they were given that's basically what, what it is uh i just i just and then that's not gonna happen it's sad and um all loss is is sad and um it just makes me sad thinking about it so um, just to bring you down a little bit more. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's gonna be, uh, you know, some good stuff happening in 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 the future. Hopefully, you hopefully, know, yeah. hopefully the world's not going straight to hell. Like we'll have some ups. Hopefully, yes, yes. Let's hope for some ups and some some better days and the loss of life to stop. Yeah, that part. So, um, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. We love you guys. If you aren't already, connect with us on social. You can follow us on um, Twitter at Book of Lies Pod, on Instagram or Facebook, Book of Lies Podcast. We have a website, Book of Lies Podcast.com. Or if you want to connect with us on Patreon and help us keep the lights on here, um, you can meet us at patreon.com backslash Book of Lies Podcast. And we have multiple tiers. So, $2, $5, $10. We'll send you stickers. We'll do a little dance for you. All the things. Check out the check out the packages. Okay. Um, hey, I'm Sunny Hepburn, and I'm Brandy Fleek, and this was Book, Book of Lies, the podcast. It's bolt bitches. Toodaloo, motherfucker. <laughs>